Hello, everyone. Give, give a man a fish, and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime, albeit on a principally fish-based diet. Um, teach a man to fish, and then give him a loan to my nets and a boat. He increases his economic uh, activity and feeds part of his village, and you're a banker. Teach a man to fish, give him a loan for the net and the boat, but make sure that the net has got holes large enough so that the small fish don't get caught as well, wiping out the entire fish stocks. And thinking from the previous talk about sort of where those fish nets would go as well, you become a sustainable banker and you're more relevant in your community. What on earth is sustainable banking. Um, I did a workshop earlier, and in a way, the first question, what is banking, is already a pretty difficult question. Putting the two together kind of creates this kind of huge explosion. Um, when we talk about sustainability and banking, a lot of the time that gets reduced to something which isn't about the sustainability that a lot of us talk about in terms of uh, ecological responsibility, intergenerational equity, how we figure out how to work as a society and be resilient into the future. A lot of it is around how do banks just keep going? And, and in a way, we kind of got into this question before, the shadow question here of how can the world help save banking? And this, this is around seven years after the crash of Lehman, uh, we're, we're sort of standing here. Um, and we still haven't figured out how that happens. Um, in a way, we were almost bored of the question. Um, the world kind of went mad, and we're sort of caught up in the madness. It was like the sort of the old Uncle Bob, and he's now thinks he thinks he's a chicken. Um, and uh, and you sort of talk to your other relatives and say, "Hey, you know, Uncle Bob, he thinks he's a chicken." I said, "Yeah, well, we know, but we could use the eggs." Um, and as a consequence, regulations that that comes into to help the world save banking, doesn't really go to the bigger, more challenging question, which I want to reverse and have uh, this reveal for the question today, which is, how can banking help save the world? Let's just dwell a moment in terms of that, because that's supposed to be quite arresting. Um, what do we mean by help save the world? Well, what, is the, what are the things happening in the world? We have huge global challenges, climate change, um, resource scarcity, things in water, um, but in terms of social relationships, the inequality and polarization in society, um, driving huge things which we see now crystallizing in the refugee crisis. We see an aging population paired with huge youth unemployment in, 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 in a lot of uh, Europe. What role could banking possibly have in this well, what role do we have in this? We see sort of here, I'm representing sort of the ascent of man up to this staircase, and we sort of see we're at this precipice. And we do feel that there is this kind of sense of normal being over. You could argue, well, we've always managed to come out of it before, and we've always managed to kind of step out, and society's managed to go on. And, and, and this isn't really anything really new. We've seen things in history, and, and to an extent that's true. Although if you really look at societies in history, societies have a history of sometimes thriving and sometimes failing. And the global challenges, the interconnected global challenges which we're now facing, the fact that climate and resource scarcity and polarization and all those things, trends are globally connected. We are now talking about the one global society either thriving or failing. That's massive. That's, that's, uh, that's a huge uh, global question. Where on earth uh, can individuals uh, take in terms of a next step? Well, you've really got, as Joanna Macy, uh, the philosopher uh, in, in, in Berkeley University, said, three choices. Um, you either just keep going as you are and think, la, 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 business as usual, 
we'll find some solution out of somewhere um, and that may well cause us falling off the edge. You could go into panic and fear and curl up into a ball and just wish it wasn't happening and get very angry. Um, or you can just connect to whatever it is within you that you feel that you can do in order to make a difference and find other people who you can connect with to be able to make that difference feel more tangible and more real. And in a way, this community uh, here is, is sort of in, in, in all own different ways searching for that. And we do find our own particular ways. We have something which is within ourselves, which is our connection to whatever the, the, the particular localized force that, that you recognize from this. There's something which you want to, to give to the world in your own way and find that freedom of expression and entrepreneurialism. And somewhere, there's also you as a citizen within part of a community saying, this is what we collectively need. And somehow, you need to be able to match these f for this freedom and this energy and this will of people with what you need in a community. And that is the potential for banking. The possibility space for banking to be what it was really supposedly designed for, which is a way of being able to facilitate and enable so that human relationships could, could figure out how individual enterprise could really meet the needs of communities. And to sort out the good agreements, the contracts, negotiating the best kind of set of agreements for how are we going to arrange all this? Now, yes, there's practices and processes which can kind of look more technical in terms of risk, but that's all it is. It's just being able to arrange different sets of human relationships so that we can do things differently and hopefully get to uh, a next step, which may or may not be up, um, but is feeling like the best step for us um, as a community. I always get dry mouth in present presenting. In terms of the solutions, there's already lots of established solutions in terms of global crises, in terms of climate change. There's already plenteous renewable energy and energy efficiency solutions for us to solve the climate crisis. A big problem now is how do you determine, how do you organize people in order to make that happen? There was no last lack of money to be able to save the banks in the banking crisis. There should not be money as being the issue. It is about the banking issue of how do you make the contracts between people to make that happen. Similarly, in terms of sustainable agriculture and organic principles, in terms of how we feed ourselves, how we use resources, the circular economy. And before the existing solutions and all the wealth of, of existing social entrepreneurial models, there's the entirety of the wealth of creativity amongst everyone in society who is, says, I think I've, I've got something which I can do and I can innovate to do this better. And for that, you need someone within the community who's selected, who's hired by the community to say, you be our banker and you figure out how this creative energy, how this innovation can work with us in this way to use, to channel our money and what we're going to do and our part of it in order to, to make this sound, in order to make this so that it, it reaches the scale that we want it to within our community to make that work. And that is a fundamentally human judgment. And at Triodos Bank, we have this, this is our, our, our principle, it's really at three levels. Firstly, at that level of motivation, to really reach to the entrepreneur and understand that motivation, that we are genuinely interested in what is that motivation, what is this, 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 this spark. It's not just about the money. That, that comes later because that's in pursuit of, of serving the purpose of what is this motivation. The next level is in the, in the social sphere. If you look at how the how the interactions are worked around a business. There's customers, um, there's suppliers, there's employees, there's other stakeholders around. How are things kept in the right balance so that everybody feels like, yeah, this, this feels like something which is, which is positive and productive. This isn't exploitative, it's not unbalanced. And at the base level, 
at the eco level, both at the economic level and at the ecological level, it makes sense. It delivers the, the returns and doesn't extract um, from the planet the, the, the resources which are, which are necessary for others. It is sustainable from an economic point of view. And the level of return that it needs to generate will be appropriate and balanced against, well, well what is it trying to do and what does it look like? And these three levels, the motivation, the social, and the eco, the economical and the, the ecological level, is the judgment that the banker must form in order to say, is this, is this viable? Is this something which we, can, which we can bring into the world? And that is the responsibility of someone who is a sustainable banker. Now, that's quite a difficult thing to kind of expound in this day and age because it uses a few concepts like balance. Well, everyone thinks something wants to be one thing or the other. Balance is a messy concept. Balance requires human judgment. It requires some degrees of compromise, it de degrees of, well, negotiation and imperfection. And yet that's the human world that we are in. This is humanity. We are not perfect beings. There is not one uh, silver bullet solution. It's about understanding and relationship and being able to work out, well, if you've got a set of skills and a, and a will to do something, but you actually really need somebody else to work with you to, to complement, then that's part of the, the constructive dialogue that the banker needs to have in order to make that work, in order to give it the best chance. And within that concept of balance, we're also balancing not just the, the returns and the financial return and the fact that we need to look after savings of depositors or, or the, the money that, that's, that's being invested in through us into the community, not only the risks in terms of what it is that could go wrong and making sure that we've done the best uh, work that we have to be able to make things as safe as possible will never be safe. But in terms of impact, and the positive impact which we have is always going to be in context of understanding, well, what is the, what is the relative uh, benefit that this has for a community? Let me give you some examples. Um, in Lima, there's a bank called Mi Banco, where the loan officers get up in the morning and they spend a little bit of time in their uh, on their computers, but then pretty much early in the morning, they are in downtown Lima, in their community, and that's where they stay and they hang out for the whole day. And they know everybody, and they're able to respond quickly because they've grown up and they are in complete relationship within their community. They're not going to stiff anybody because they live there and they have to show up the next day and the day after that. They're able to respond quickly because when somebody approaches them, they're not just a, a faceless thing which has come through the internet and popped up as a loan application which has to be processed through some, some algorithm and then notes typed up. They're the person who they've grown up with. They know, they know the parents, they know the uncle and aunt, they know who they've spoken to, they know the interconnection. They, they're able to ask the constructive questions to be able to make it work. Within Triodos Bank, we we work with a number of entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, environmental entrepreneurs. Some of the principles which we work to are, are really being able to make sure that we demonstrate impact through transparency, but also use that transparency to make it clear to the community what is happening and how are we doing this. We had, uh, we had a very successful bank account um, which offered no interest at all. You parked a uh, 1,000 euros with us. Uh, and it was called the chicken and egg account. Um, and we took the thousand euros and we collected those up and we lent money to sustainable organic farmers um, raising chickens. And we said, we're not going to give you any interest, but we'll give you a voucher for eggs. And so you can go to the shop and you can, you can take some eggs uh, uh, for five years and then you get your money back. Um, and in the meantime, basically, you've been helping the farmer um, and that's how, that's how the circle goes. We were going to actually have, after five years, you got the chicken. That didn't work out so well. Um, but we've, we've worked in a variety of ways um, in being able to mobilize some of these complex situations. And we're looking now at the energy um, crisis and looking at how do we, how do we help, for example, um, health and social care um, organizations or arts and cultural buildings to save energy. 
heating and lighting. And we're taking inspirations from some of the work which we do in emerging markets through partners. So, for example, in Mongolia, where, where uh, a bank called Hasbank um, has insulated hundreds of thousands of people's wooden huts, the, the gares in, uh, in Ulaanbaatar, which is the second coldest capital city in the world, um, and been able to mobilize, again, finance for the good of community. There's lots of examples, and we publish every single loan that we do. Part of that transparency is being able to enable the community to make decisions and to have a dialogue with us. We are, we're owned by ordinary people, thousands of them are customers. We're not on the stock market. Um, in fact, we don't even give people a true vote um, because our mission is enshrined by a foundation who owns us, who, who, who protects what we are going to do. We, we don't want to be democratic from the point of view of voting. We want to be democratic from the point of view of reaching out and having genuine dialogue with people. So thousands and thousands of people all over Europe come to our annual meetings and will challenge us on what we're doing and how we can be doing more of it. And, and the, the, the dialogue, I can tell you, is not about you know, why can't they get higher interest rates or more return. It's about how can we be doing more in the world and being more relevant. And this is happening across the world and it's radiating. There is a, a network of banks, the Global Alliance for Banking on Values, which with microfinance organizations and credit unions and all different types of banking models is purposefully setting out to see how can they, how can they learn from one another. They're already serving 20 million customers and it's, it's quite sizable. There are, from the, uh, from the top down, um, through UNEP-FI, there's now a project uh, on positive impact, which I'm part of, which is looking at how do you enable large banks to actually start to collaborate with each other and harness some of the latent um, skills and energy that people have to say, how do we figure out how to do more um, in the world and, and tackle relevant problems? How do we, how do we mobilize that? How do we experiment um, with that? And um, there's, there's taking disruptors uh, within businesses of the Finance Innovation Lab We'll be working with um, all sorts of new uh, uh, innovators, crowdfunding for renewable energy and such the like, to be able to bring a disruption into the financial sector uh, and, and try to kind of have a more diverse uh, and fair system. I can tell that time's up. I'm not going to be much longer. Um, in terms of banks and what we will do in terms of the values-based banking world, we're trying to scale up what's there. Um, when I started 18 years ago in Triodos Bank, which was a tiny little bank, um, we'd had a balance sheet of 20 million in the UK, and we're now over 12 billion euros. Um, I made a loan to a small cooperative of Welsh hill farmers doing a, a, a wind energy scheme, um, and it was tiny in comparison now to what you see in renewables. And that being able to scale up sort of, re sort of reiterates that, that now renewable energy, you see a wind farm, it's just commonplace. Fair trade has almost become boring and passe. I think it's uh, Rebecca Solnit who said, you never get to celebrate the victories you have sometimes because by the time you've achieved it, everyone goes, yeah, but that's, that's obvious now. So what we need to do is look for renewal. How can we look to do the next thing? The refugee crisis right now, we're, we're asking ourselves tough questions about what it is we can do. How can we find the social entrepreneurs who, who are going to make a difference? Our innovation is fairly frugal. Because all we have to do really is just listen well, to find the people who've got ideas and figure out how we can connect up the system to give them the best support. The final part of it is being able to shift habits. So asking me, me asking this question, can banking help save the world, is really going to be a challenge for you because in a way, it's our own behaviors which can sometimes prevent this question being asked. Unwittingly, by engaging in the same old ways with the banking institutions which we have and, and our deference towards them can sometimes reiterate and uh, build on the, the current situation. However, it's predicated on our understanding of money. And money is sort of dirty and it's, it's, it's a weird concept and it's, it's something which we don't want to go to because it feels like it's technical. And we only engage in it when it's reading bills or mortgage statements or, or all of that stuff. And how do you connect all of this meaning and life purpose 
to the point that money is just in service of that and is just an instrument to be able to serve it. And therefore, if money is in service of meaning, can we then translate it for banks really being in service of society? I believe it can, and by being able to do some of that inner work in terms of what we think banks are doing within our communities and changing the conversation we have with banks, with each other, about what we can do, we can reframe, we can reframe the situation and dig into some of the internal freedoms and energies of people in the banking sector who are equally horrified by the ugliness of the financial crisis and all that's being created and are desperate to unleash themselves to actually find their own higher meaning and purpose. And together, we might be able to help banking help save the world. Thanks very much.